Well, it was Einstein, wasn't it, that said uh, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome is the heightened of stupidity. That, so, was, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. Again, yeah, I probably, yeah. bu- probably butchered that to some extent. But it was that thing, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a d- different result. It's, yes. It's madness. Yes. Um, so something has to change. So welcome back to Small East Alliance FC. This weekend, Birmingham City take on Coventry City at St Andrews at Knighthead Park in what is another crucial game. But we have, including this game, four matches left uh, to really try and save our season. We currently sit second bottom now of the championship and we've just lost uh, on in midweek at home to Cardiff City. So in this video, myself and Matt will be discussing the Coventry game and trying to uh, give you some ideas of what we think the team might be and formations, etc. Uh, and what our prospects for the game are. So I'll just bounce it straight over to Matt and say, well, Coventry City coming to St Andrews and Knighthead Park. What's your thoughts? Well, let's be honest, Dad. If we turn up on Saturday like we did on Wednesday against Cardiff, I think we're in big trouble. You know, yeah. Co- Coventry are a quality team. Um, they're in the FA Cup semi-final against United they, they are pushing for that uh, that sixth space I think uh, them and Norwich are poss- it's going to be between them and Norwich possibly for that final yeah. playoff spot so they're pushing yeah. for that so I think it's going to be it's going to be a difficult game regardless and but even if the players turn up and give 100% it's still a tough challenge Coventry so we need you know these players to listen to social media listen to the fans that you know we've told them we need more passion we need more drive uh, we need some leadership. So I don't know what Rabbit's going to do in terms of setup, but it's going to be an interesting game. We're in for a tough weekend. And for those that don't know, I actually work in Coventry. Um, so I actually have a good in with the fan base in terms of like, you know, I speak to them a lot of work and, you know, they give me a lot of banter. I give it back. They, they talk to me. In fact, if we're going to call it what it is, Blues are almost the laughing stock of the office this year. But then I give them that ba- that banter back about them trying to create a rivalry with absolutely everyone and anyone. <laughs> um, so we do have quite a bit of banter back and forth. But if we lose it, I'm going to say, now I'm working from home on Monday. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, you know, they're an interesting team, Coventry. There's no doubt about it. They've got some high quality players. They got off to a bit of a slow start like they always do. Coventry seem yeah. to come out the trap slow and then they yeah. pick up around the Christmas time and onwards. They started off their season with a lot of draws. Um, but just in their last five games, if you don't mind, I just want to, want to quickly reference some of their results. So they're, they're coming off the back of a loss, 2-1 to Southampton. Uh, they beat Leeds, a massive result, 2-1. Uh, lost to Cardiff, 2-1. They beat Huddersfield, 3-1. And then they had that epic um, comeback against Wolves in the FA Cup that we watched on the concourse yeah. at St Andrews. So yeah. we need our players to be firing in a passion. And even then, we're in for a challenge, but it's going to be a difficult Saturday. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a must-win game for both teams. Uh, but I think based upon what you've just said in terms of their current form, you know, they, they've had some really good results recently. Had a few a few losses in between, but what worries me about us is our form at the moment. You know, we've, we've lost five of the last six and eight of the last ten. Um, oh, no. And uh, our players' confidence is not going to be high, and particularly after the performance against Cardiff. Uh, I, I think we'll talk about the Blues team in a minute in terms of uh, the uh, how I think Gary Rowett will, will 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 set us up. But just looking and focusing on Coventry for the moment, uh, their away record is pretty good. They've won eight on the road, um, drawn four and lost nine, so they've got a reasonably good um, away record. Scored thirty four goals. Yeah. But they're a very flary team, aren't they? We saw them. We was at the C- we was at the CBS. We went to the away game where, well, for Birmingham uh, at uh, Coventry, um, and that was when we had uh, Rooney as manager. Uh, and they they do look like a really good side, don't they? They're very fast on the transition. They've got good wing play, um, really fast paced players. I mean. But Hadji Wright and uh, Ellie Sims are in really, really good scoring yeah. form at the moment. So, so Hadji Wright's got 15 this season. Ellie Sims has got 13. So yeah. you know, for two forward players, that's you know pretty good scoring record. Yeah, but they, they've had uh, obviously uh, Hadji Wright's also got six assists on top of that yeah. as well. So he, he's a uh, he's another one to uh, uh, again. To watch. Interesting, just because again I, I work with Cov fans. Uh, at the start of the season, they weren't actually massively impressed with Hadji Wright and Ellie Sims. They've they've only just come into form sort of the second half. They of the started season, off very slow, but they're they're firing on all cylinders now. Really yeah. dangerous players. Yeah, it's, it's what you do over the whole season at Cairns. I think when, when the Coventry fans look back at this season at those two players, I think they're going to be really, really happy with them. Although, as you say, they made a, they made a very slow start. Uh, yeah. A bit of a nemesis for us is Callum O'Hare as well. Yeah, good uh, he, I, I, I'm almost certain that because it's us, he'll probably start. And <laughs> um, score. Uh, and he, he, well, he, scored, uh, he scored six goals this season, had three assists, but he had a lot of the start of the season out on in, yeah. injured as but well, so he missed a load of games. Well, as well. Uh, two of those goals were against us at the CBS. 
Yes, they were. They were. I, I do like him actually. He's, 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 a, he's a good, really good midfield player. But they, I mean, the, the strength all over that side. You got it depends on how um, a Mark Robbins picks his team because obviously they, they'll have one eye on the FA Cup. But I think they'll still uh, still oh. pick a full strength team because of course they will. They'll be still hunting for that to, to playoff players. But you know, no, no, name a few players. You know, you've got uh, Casey Palmer, uh, Josh Eccles, Matt Godden. Uh, uh, I know Sakamoto is injured, uh, so he won't be playing against us. But he's a, he's another good quality player. You got yeah. is it Van Elwick as well, or is yeah, it, he's. He's a, he's a really good player as well. Two goals and five assists as well. Um, and you could go on through that team. Uh, ben Chief controls the midfield. Real yeah, quality good, player. Good, 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 really good player. Good, good I really captain. like Ben Chief. Yeah. Um, so for me, as I said, I, I sort of picked out similar players to you. The two obvious ones, because the strikers get the attention, was Hadji Wright and Ellie Sims, 15 goals and 13 goals respectively. Then I picked out Callum O'Hare as their sort of playmaker, danger man. Because uh, you know he he he's so good at picking out a pass and picking out yeah. their runs, he's a brilliant. And then Ben Chief was another big one for me because he just controls the midfield. Brilliant player. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna run as ragged, and, and I, I I get worried when I think of Hadji Wright and Ellis Sims, and I, I think of Iwu and Sanderson and, and our back line in general. Yeah. I must admit it does fear me with dread. I think because they're fast, they're pacey players. Yeah, they're, especially they're... Hadji Wright, he's lightning. Yeah. So yeah, tough tough afternoon, and and, and our defenders have to keep those concentrations levels to to the absolute max. They're 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 a side as well. Looking at their stats as well, that they're really good at finishing as well. So that they, you know, when they create chances, they've got a good ratio compared to other teams of uh, of finishing their goals as well. Yeah. Uh, they they love attacking down the wings as well. So that's that's going to really be something that we need to be really really yeah. cautious of. And I think because of the way that they've actually evolved over the last few years, there's a, there's, a, there's almost like a bit of a steal in that side now as well. That they 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 you know they know what their manager expects of them. They know and they're comfortable in their style of play. Yeah. Um, and they're just a really good side. Yeah. So, uh, and they've uh, they've paid their dues as well. They were in League Two five or six seasons ago, and they've built their way yeah. up to the to the Championship. And they almost made the you know penalty away from Premier League football last year. So they've I actually have a lot of admiration for Cobb in terms of coming up the system. They've built up. Uh, they've done it the right way as well. You know, they sold Hamer and Yakarez last season for I think it was twenty million a piece, give or take. What's that going to do to a team like Coventry? Forty million extra there in the budget yeah, to spend, and they have yeah. bought in Hadji Wright. They've bought in Ellis Sim. So, to me, actually, the Coventry model is quite an admirable model. They've done it well. They've worked hard. They've gone through the leagues, and they they buy cheap and sell high. They they only bought Yakarez for I believe between somewhere between one and five million. I think it might be just one million, but they sold him for twenty. I know. That's how you do it. Mm. Um, and I think at the start of the season, the reason why they got off to a slow start was because they were feeling the gap of Yakarez and Hamer because they're two. You can't deny they're absolutely two massive players. And I remember Robbins coming out a lot in his in his post match uh, conferences saying, you know, this is going to take time to build the new team, yeah. build the new yeah. players. And to me, they look like a team now who have found that stride. They're firing on all on all cylinders and. I think it's also worth mentioning as well. They're solid at the back as well. I mean, yeah. they've been favouring a uh, Bath Mountain goal against Cardiff. That was hilarious. Uh, Absolutely yeah, dinking uh, the top corner. They're, they're, they're <laughs> probably goal, goal, uh, own goal of the season that one. I felt sorry. It was, it was uh, Kitchen who, um, yes, it, who yeah, got, it, he got yeah. two. He got two in that good game player as well. Though. Um, uh, but they they play with a um, uh, almost like a flat back four now. So they're, they're solid at the back as well. So I think for us, um, it's going to be a really really tough game. So we've spoken so, about the qualities of uh, of Coventry. So what I'm asking now about what do you think about uh, Birmingham City? So, what do you think? How do you, how do you think we'll set up? Um... I don't think quality goes hand in hand with Birmingham City, does it? Yeah. <laughs> not, not the moment. Um, so. so, this is really interesting because we've just put out the Cardiff video, and I mentioned about what can Rabbit do because we have no squad depth. So, we referenced the under twenty ones. The under twenty ones are top of their top of their division. We've got players like Donovan and Dixon possibly uh, to come off on the bench. So he might want to consider a bit of fresh energy, twenty minutes towards the end of the game, half an hour towards the end of the game with these players. I mean. Could he look at starting them? I mean, it can't get any worse from the Cardiff, Cardiff game in terms of passion and desire. And, you know, younger players tend to give you that energy and that drive, yeah. don't they? So who knows? Maybe he might start to tap into the resource of the younger players. Um, I want to pass something off you. I think he'll set up very similar to the way he did Cardiff. I think it's a mentality thing. And a well, 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 thing, well he, ha he has done for Preston and Leicester. Exactly. So it's the same type so, of... Uh, so what do you think about this? What do you think about dropping Bielek back at the centre-half um, taking out Iwu or Sanderson, putting Dizal back in the back into the centre mid because I actually think Bielek is a stronger centre half than he is centre mid if I'm honest. Yeah. And he looks completely lost if he if he has the ball over the halfway line. And we felt it last night. Bielek had the ball a couple of times and he just did, he just doesn't know what to yeah. do with it. He doesn't know where yeah. to go. Yeah. Whereas Dizal and Paik when they're together, they are a lot more front footed and they do make us push the ball forward a little bit more. And Bielek does link up with Paik and Dizal quite nicely. So the honestly, I, I'm. Still in that zone at the moment where I'm reflecting on the Cardiff game. I still can't can't quite get my head around how bad that performance was. But a couple of initial things I was thinking was, one, trial out some younger youth of players. 
Uh, maybe not at the start of the game, possibly bringing them off on the bench. And also, I think dropping Bielek back into centre half and maybe starting with the Dizel might put us a bit more front footed, might make us a bit more solid at the back as well, especially when you're dealing with Ellis Sims and Hadji Wilde. I, I think that's a good share. I think that's. I, I don't know whether he'll do it though, because that was that was what Tony Mowbray did. And he, he that, that was his style, wasn't it? He put Bielek um, uh, as a centre half. It, it, it did. It did work, and yeah. he had Dizel and Paik as the centre. But I don't think Gary Rowett favours that, and we have to respect at the moment that Gary Rowett is our manager. But I, I, um, I think that's a really good shout. I think. I was is is a bit of a risk, isn't he? And uh, you know, he, he showed that again uh, in the previous game against uh, Cardiff in spells that uh, it was quite risky, particularly when uh, one of the Cardiff players, uh, oh. I think it's Carlin Grant, was he needed. He just needed to tackle him early, but let him Take run, him run, out. And run, and and, and Ruddy had to make a good save, but he literally should have took took him and the ball together. Mm. Uh, so so I think that would be a good shout to bring Bielek back to centre half uh, and then bring in um, uh, bring back Dazel. Yeah, uh, you you could argue maybe and make an argument argument for Sunic as well against Coventry because he's a battler and he will break up play. I know I know that's controversial Birmingham fans because I know that a lot of Birmingham fans um see uh, Sunic is a bit of a you know uh, just runs around and doesn't do much else but that but that might be what we need against Coventry just to yeah. try and break up their play. Yeah. Um, I, I think also, I, I think he makes us personally. I, I think he makes us a little bit vulnerable. And if you've got fast players who who move the ball quickly, he could make us a bit more. Well, vulnerable, out of all the positions in the uh, in our right. team, out of all the positions in our team, we're not short of midfielders. Mm. Um, so so I think maybe Dazal and Paik might be a better option. Yeah. And I, and I, I also agree with you. We've had this conversation about we should maybe where we are now. We've got nothing to lose by at least putting uh, Junior Dixon and um, Donovan. Ro- Roma Donovan on the uh, on the bench just to uh, freshen things up because mm. something has to change Matt doesn't it you know we can't we can't really just keep picking the same players with the same system and expect them to do something different something yeah. has to change yeah. uh, and I think that might be some you know what, what do you think Blue supporters about that actually that's a, you know, a, good, a good suggestion do you think that will be a good suggestion to try and look at Bielek back at centre back um, bring on Dazelle uh, in midfield and possibly look at some yeah. of the uh, of the younger players yeah. well it was Einstein wasn't it that said uh, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome is the heightened of stupid that, so, was, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that again. Yeah, I probably yeah. bu- I probably butchered that to some extent, but it was that thing, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a d- different result. It's, yes, it's madness. Yes. Um. So something has to change. I don't. I don't. Know, I don't know whether you agree, Dad. But listening to Rowett's post match interview again by the pitch side after they always come out, he seemed quite. Uh, adamant that changes are going to be made. He seemed very unhappy with certain elements of that performance. So I actually think Rowett is brutal enough and has the sense enough to make some changes. I just genuinely don't know what those changes are because we don't have the squad depth. Um, so for me, the only thing I can think of is a Bielek drop-off with Dazal in the middle. Um, I mean, if, uh, if, if, if anything, you know, I, I do have some sympathy. Obviously, obviously, we're Blues fans, so we can have sympathy for ourselves. But for the whole Blues fan base, yeah. I have a lot of sympathy for the situation at the moment. And also for, for Tom Wagner and the team uh, who, have, who have bought us because they've not really really had a transfer window uh, mm. so therefore yeah. this, this team is a team that was here at the beginning of the season uh, under John Eustace Bar um, Paik um, uh, we have Pritchard and uh, Paik Pritchard and who else Dazelle they came in in January so actually you know we, we haven't had the opportunity to have a transfer window yet from uh, from Knighthead and so they must be looking at this team and all the good things have happened over the last couple of weeks in terms of the announcement of the land purchase and the possible um, location of the and size of the new stadium uh, they must be so frustrated with the team where they are at the moment uh, it sort of puts a bit of a spanner in the works but we know there's a brighter future but we're worried about now of course we are yeah, we're worried about right now and uh, this game in particular uh, is our second or it's a penultimate home game of the season against a really, really good team where we actually have to now get something out of it. Mm-hmm. So um, I think for all the reasons we've just discussed, it's a tough one. Also as well, I think from a goal, a goal threat, um, you know, maybe we need to look at um, giving St- uh, Stansfield some more support up front because he runs around, he runs his socks off, but... He's on his own. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, we said before, didn't we go into a four four two? But now uh, Yuki's injured. I don't know who would be that second striker. We, well, have, we, we, we haven't really got the support to go to a four four two. I know if, if, I, if, if anybody, it would be Tyler Roberts, but he's not scored oh, this terrible. season. I mean, yeah. His last game that he started was against QPR. I'm just call it what it is. He was awful. Yeah, uh, yeah, really not a goal threat whatsoever. No goals this season. That would be a risk for me starting him up there with Stansfield. But yeah. I completely take your point and agree that Stansfield needs some help up there because he's running around like a headless chicken. Bless him. He's getting no service, no quality balls through. So. so 
something has to change. I'm intrigued to see what it is on Saturday, but we are in for a tough game. Okay. I just want to come back to the Coventry thing. So um, Cov have changed their formation a few times this year, and you mentioned, so they've played a 3-4-1-2 17 times and a 4-2-3-1 15 times. So they're, yeah. they're the two formations that they, they yeah. favour. Um, and against Southampton, it was the 4-2-3-1, which they lost 2-1 uh, in. But regardless of what formation Coventry played, they're going to come at us like a steam train. Yeah. Do you remember Leicester when we were sitting in our, in our own half and they were just we were absorbing yeah. the pressure? I've got a feeling at certain times during this game, we're going to be... Si- and that's not as uh, negatively saying that we're in the relegation zone, we need to be pushing. That's just a sign of a quality team that we're going to be pegged back in our own half a little bit in this half, I think, and they're going to be coming at us. Um, they average 50% possession... 50% possession in any given game across uh, across the season so far. So it's slightly lower than what the top four teams would be having, but um, Coventry are a quality, quality side. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest here. You know, I don't give this opinion very often, but I, I can't see much further than a loss. I'm totally honest this weekend. I mean, yeah. absolute maximum of the players come and bring it and and we go back to sort of the, the graft of the Preston game and the Leicester game. We might scrape a point, but I just can't see it. I think I think I think we're going to be overrun with quality this weekend, and I can only see a minus the commentary win. Yeah, and I think you've been real. I, 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 you know, we all we can always predict victories for for Birmingham City. Anybody, can, that's what that's our, that's our aspiration and our hope. But we we've just come, you know, uh, from watching Birmingham City at home to to Cardiff City, and there's no confidence in that game. Uh, the problem is, is that Coventry score. We can't score, you know. We're not scoring goals, so if we concede, we, we, we you know, it means we've got to get two to win the game. And they score a lot of goals, guys. Yeah, I, 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 as an absolute optimistic prediction, it would be a draw. I think would be, uh, but I mean, if we could, if we can scrape a win somehow, I don't forget this is this is this is Birmingham City. They, they, <laughs> they, they always do what you don't expect. Yeah, uh, yeah, so uh, who knows? But let's see. So, what do you think, Birmingham City supporters, uh, about the uh, the Coventry game? I know there's going to be a big crowd there at St Andrews and Knighthead Park, and I know that we will always get behind the team because we always do. But we're in tough times, aren't we? And we're about to play a, a really good t- uh, team that's got to the FA Cup semi final, and they're also. Uh, pushing for that final playoff place as well. But we are in a relegation scrap and therefore our players really have to uh, turn up and they have to represent the shirt and they have to try their very best to uh, put a put a shift in. So let us know in the comments below what you think about the uh, the team selection possibly or maybe even the score. Also be great to hear from Coventry City supporters as well. Let us know what you think about uh, your prospects for the rest of the season and, uh, uh, and just let us uh, have your views on what you think the outcome of the game might be. But myself and Matt, uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you if you did, don't forget to give us a uh, thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check us out on our social media channels and you'll see our X handle and our Instagram handle appearing on the screen right now. And of course, if you haven't pressed that subscribe button already, make sure you press subscribe so that you don't miss any future content or videos all about Birmingham City from me and Matt. So we'll both see you on the next video.